Hello, friends. How are you? Are you ready to continue uh, with the American Revolutionary War? And we left where the first shot fired at Lexington in Concord. Uh, it was known as the shot heard around the world. And this was what, um, how the war began. That's right. The American Revolution had began towards our independence. Because remember, we were colonies from Britain, England. And they were taxing us, and we didn't want taxation without representation. And we began with, um, they began with taxing with the tax stamp, the tea tax, and then the British wanted to come and get the, the uh, patriots or colonists um, gun power and guns, and we stopped them. That's right, um, the Minutemen. And others helped to stop it. And we read about Paul Revere, how he helped to let all, um, all the patriots and Minutemen uh, know that the, I say, um, that the British were coming. Remember, one by one lantern by land and two by sea. Okay, chapter four, war. Colonists from New England began gathering from outside Boston. Their goal was to run the British out of the city. About 10,000 patriots arrived to fight the British. On the night of June 16, 1775, a group of patriots climbed Breed's Hill. They were led by Colonel William Prescott. Breed's Hill stood across the river from Boston. They planned to build a fort on top of the hill. The men worked throughout the night. The next morning, the British saw that a fort had gone up overnight. Because it's in the hill, that's right, so they can see it. Warships began shelling the fort. Oh, they're coming. British soldiers crossed the river to destroy it. So they want to destroy the fort. They don't want the patriots to have a fort because the fort is where... Um, when you're fighting, it helps you shelter yourself against the, the enemy. They were 2,500 British troops at the battle, almost twice the number of patriots. So twice. That's why right, twice. So it, that would mean that there was 1,250 um, 1, patriots, and that's and the British had doubled, 2,500. The British started to climb up Breed's Hill, but their heavy weapons and packs slowed them down. Don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes, Colonel Prescott yelled to his men. The Patriots quietly watched and waited. When the British came closer, the colonists began to fire. They fought bravely. Twice they drove the British back. The third time, the colonists ran out of bullets. So they don't have bullets to fight. Oh my goodness, what happened? They had to use their muskets as clubs. Soon they were forced to retreat. So they had to use their, their muskets as clubs, like for hitting. But they were forced to retreat. Remember what we said retreat means? It means to leave. That's right. They, they left. They didn't want the, um, how you say, the British um, capturing them. Okay. So here we see a picture. Hmm. I wonder who he is. Okay. Even though it's called the Battle of Bunker Hill, it was fought on Britt's Hill. Washington in command. That means command means in charge. In June and July 1775, the Continental Congress appointed George Washington to lead the Colonial Army. Washington was six feet two inches tall. He was a fine athlete with commanding presence. So he was as tall as Mr. McCrow, very tall, that's right. Washington owned a plantation in Virginia called Mount Vernon. 
He had fought bravely in the French and Indian Wars. People admire his strength and courage. Washington's army was called the Continental Army. So whenever you hear the Continental Army, that's going to be like saying the Patriots Army, the American Army, that's right, the Colonist Army, because it's fighting against the British. Washington traveled to Boston. He found a ragtag group of men waiting for him. They had come from all over the 13 colonies. Many worked as farmers, teachers, fishermen, or merchants. Most had little training for war. They didn't have uniforms. Almost all of them brought their own guns. Some brought their wives to cook and care for them. Some even brought their dogs. So um, they come and they begin to form an army and all these men are coming and uh, they're bringing their own um, guns and they're bringing their wives so they can cook and care for them. And some are even bringing their dogs. British retreat from Boston. So British leaving Boston, that's right. Washington needed canyons to defeat the British. In December, December 1775, he asked a young soldier named Henry Knox to travel to Fort Tingo de Roga in northern New York. Americans had captured British canyons there. Henry's job was to haul the canyons nearly 300 miles back to Boston. So he has to haul, I mean, he has to like pull the canyons. Now we know that, you know, just one person can't do it, that's right? Boy, as Boys as young as 12 sign on as cooks, helpers, and drummers. So they could be, um, you were 12 years old, you could be a cook, um, a cook helpers, and you could be a drummer. That's right. Henry began working in a bookstore. When he was a young boy, Henry and some other men left for the long journey to the north. At Fort Tiki Ticonderoga, they loaded 59 canyons onto sleds. Teams of oxen pulled the heavy loads. Snowy, rough roads lay ahead. But 56 days later, Henry and the canyons arrived in Boston. Farmers along the way help Henry. So we know that he's not doing this by himself, that's right. He has help from um, oxen. And they're, they're, like, they're like big um, cows or bulls, that's right. But they're, they're very, they're tame. So he had a, um, help of a lot of people. Washington ordered his men to drag the canyons up a hill. The hill overlooked Boston. When the British spotted the canyons, they panicked. Oh, they have canyons. What are we going to do? They left Boston in March of 1776. So here, let's read what it says here. Oh, man, the canyons were very heavy. And this is just a cartoon because we know that you, you can't pull a canyon by yourself especially a boy. It was like pulling a car. And I imagine pulling a car. That's right. You can't do it by yourself. And here it says, turn the page to check out our favorite flags of the American Revolution. So our flag isn't the one it, it's now. It has changed over the years. Our favorite flags. There was no official flag during colonial times. Many different flags flew over the colonies. Here are some of the most popular. Grand Union flag. George Washington used this flag in January 1776. It was the first flag of the United States. So this was the first flag of the United States. Uh, rattlesnake flag. That's interesting. Some colonists used this flag to show they weren't afraid of 
the British. Don't tread on me. That's what the flag says here. This flag was to scare the British. George Washington's headquarters flag. General Washington flew this flag over his headquarters throughout the war. So it's saying that he flew this flag during the war. That's right. First Stars and Stripes. In 1777, Congress adopted a flag with 13 stars and stripes as the flag of the United States. They represented the 13 colonies. So first there were 13 stars representing the 13 colonies because that was, that was remember, we were colonies from, um, from England, from the British, that's right, we belonged to them we were colonists but then we came together because there was just 13 states before 13 colonies there was no california oklahoma tennessee so there was only 13 so here we see the 13 um stars for the 13 colonies and here we see the 13 stripe for the 13 colonies and that's how our flags began The Declaration of Independence. So this is, we're declaring our independence. In May 1776, the Continental Congress met in Philadelphia. This time, the delegates came as rebels against the British government. Now they're rebels, that's right, because they're secretly going and meeting there. Rebel means to fight against someone you think has unfair control over you. So they, they were rebels because they thought it was unfair for the British to control the colonies. They were 56 delegates from the colonies. They wanted to be independent from Britain. That means they didn't want to be a part of Britain. They were a part of Britain and they wanted their independence. That's right. They were going to be their own country. The delegates decided to put this idea in a declaration of independence. They chose Thomas Jefferson from Virginia to write it. They asked four other men to help him. Among them were John Adams of Massachusetts and Ben Franklin of Pennsylvania. These men are often called the fathers of our country. They're often called the fathers of our country because they were the ones who um, wrote the, the Declaration of Independence, the ones who came and were um we're planning everything for the independence for our country it took thomas jefferson 17 days to write the declaration each day he got up and played his violin then he put his portable desk on a table and began to write the words he wrote would inspire people all over the world and they continue to inspire us today The Declaration of Independence said that all men are created equal. That means that no matter what race, what color you are, you have, were created equal, were the same. The Declaration also said that if the people decided their government was not protecting them, they had the right to challenge it. Finally, Jefferson listed all the wrongs the British had done to the colonists. He wanted everyone to know how Britain had treated the colonies. So here, here we have um, the, the 56 delegates uh, signing the Declaration of Independence. Not fair. The Declaration did not free slaves. It's true. That was not fair. They did not free the slaves. It did not apply to women either. They were nearly 200 years of struggle before we had equality for all Americans. On July 4th, 1776, the delegates met in Independence Hall in Philadelphia to vote on the Declaration of Independence. 
So they come and say, should we do this? And they voted to accept it. So all of them voted that we're going to accept it. We're going to declare our independence from Britain. That's right. We're not going to we're not going to belong to Britain anymore. We're going to seek our independence. So independence. That's right. Um, the men knew that declaring independence from Britain was dangerous. If the colonists fought and didn't win, the British would punish them, maybe even hang them. They knew they all had to work together. Benjamin Franklin said, we must all hang together or most assuredly, we will all hang separately. So we must do everything together. That's right. After the vote, they rang a large bell at Independence Hall called the Liberty Bell. The bell rang all day. As the bell pealed out, people all over Philadelphia knew the declaration had been approved. So this is the Liberty Bell, that's right, cracked in 1846, and it cannot ring today. So later on in 1846, it cracked, so it can't be um, rang anymore, okay? The print shops and newspapers in Philadelphia rushed to print the copies of for the colonists. That's right, they want to tell all the colonists what's going on. Riders leapt on their horses and galloped away to deliver the news. It was two months before all 13 colonies learned the news. So it took two months so all the colonies could, could learn, the 13 colonies. Because remember, as I said, there were no trains back then. There were no cars. There were no airplanes. So you had to do either go by ship or you had to go by horse or by carriage. So snail mail. George Washington read a copy of the Declaration of Independence to cheer to the cheers of his soldiers. Yay! Meet some stars of the revolution. So when it says meet some stars of the revolution, it's saying important people that helped. That's right. To our independence. So here. We have men and women of the revolution. Here we have Thomas Jefferson. He owned a law plantation in Virginia. He was a lawyer with a love of learning. In fact, he founded the University of Virginia. Jefferson, Jefferson was the third president of the United States. Benjamin Franklin had only, had only one year of school, but he became a famous writer and scientist who spoke three languages. Franklin worked to get France help in the war. Later, he helped write a truce with the British. He was a very intelligent man. John Adams was a lawyer from New England. He believed in justice. Though he was a patriot, he defended the British soldiers accused of killing people during the Boston Massacre. He was our second president. Abigail Adams, and here we have Abigail Adams, ran the family farm along when her husband John was away. She told John Adams to remember the ladies when making new laws for the nation. Yes, you know, remember the ladies. We need um, the same laws as men. Thomas Paine, and we talked about Thomas Paine inspired the patriots by writing a popular pamphlet called Common Sense. In it, he urged the colonists to break away from Britain. George Washington, we all know George Washington. George Washington thought he was leaving home for one year to fight the British. The war lasted eight years. Okay, eight years. Afterwards, he became the first president of the United States, our capital, Washington, D.C. It's named after him. John Hancock was the first to sign the declaration. He wrote his name in big letters. He did this so the king could read it without his glasses. 
Today, when people sign their names on a letter, they say they're putting their John Hancock on it so everybody could see it. And here in this picture, this is Phyllis Whitley. Phyllis Whitley began life in America as a slave. Later, she was given her freedom. Philip, Phyllis became a poet. Important people, including Benjamin Franklin, admire her work. She sent a poem to George Washington praising him and the revolution. Okay, here we have Nathan Hale was a soldier for the revolution. His job was to spy on the British. So he was a spy for us and he spied the British. Nathan was caught and hanged. Before he died, he declared, I regret that I have put one life to lose for my country. And this is pa Patrick Henry gave serious speeches urging revolution. In one famous speech, he said, As, ask me, give me liberty or give me death. Okay, that's a very um, famous quote. That's right. Okay. Oh, I'm going backwards. As for as for as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Okay. Now the last person we had is Mary Catherine Goddard, ran a newspaper in Baltimore. In, in January 1777, she published the Declaration of Independence. For the first time, all the signers were listed. The signers were listed. Later, she became the first woman postmaster in America. So she had a, she ran a newspaper and she uh, printed the Declaration of Independence so everybody could read and see it. And then she became the first woman postmaster in America, working in the post office. Okay, so next, um, here we have George Washington. And we're going to be um, reading uh, next week, War in the Northeast. So I want you to write down um, an interesting fact that you learned today and also uh, let me see okay who wrote the Declaration of Independence okay well nice seeing you and I'll see you next week bye friends have a good week miss you always miss you always do